Have you ever wondered how some of the largest websites handle millions of users simultaneously without crashing? Or how they transfer your data securely when directing you to the right server? In this video, we're going to dive into the three critical web components, which are proxies, reverse proxies, and load balancers. Whether you are an engineer or just curious about how the internet works behind the scenes, in this video, we will break down these complex concepts in simple, easy to understand terms. So let's get started. Imagine you're planning a dinner at a popular restaurant, but you don't want to interact directly with the staff because you're too busy or too lazy or you're shy, whatever the reason. So instead, you have a personal assistant who makes the reservation on your behalf. So the restaurant staff never interacts directly with you. They only communicate with your assistant. In this scenario, you are the laptop that you use to browse the internet and your personal assistant is a proxy server. And proxy server acts as a middleman between your private network, which your laptop is connected to, and the public internet where your requests go out. And the proxy is protecting your laptop by filtering traffic and blocking any harmful websites or scripts or code before the response gets forwarded back to you. Now, in a company scenario where this is more important, let's say you have many employees and they are browsing the internet and going on who knows what websites. So for example, if your marketing employee visits some shady website and clicks on a link to download some new presentation tool, it may be a malicious website, so they send some virus as a response along with the tool. And when a malicious content or script penetrates your company internal network, through one employee's computer, it may do some real damage to many other things in your company. So to protect the internal network, an administrator in the company may configure all internet traffic of all the employees' machines to be routed through a proxy. So proxy will now stand as the guard of your company internal network. You can blacklist any websites that you don't want any of your people to visit and proxy will block this traffic. But for any other requests that actually do go out to the internet to various websites, it will also scan the responses for any viruses and of course block them if they are malicious. So it acts as a shield between your private network and the public internet. Plus it can also log user activity to show what sites people are visiting. And on top of that, proxy also has another important feature which is caching responses. So for example, if one engineer in your company visits this tutorial video about proxies to learn new skills, the proxy will fetch that video from YouTube and cache it locally. So now when 10 other engineers see that and decide they also want to watch such informative tutorial to learn new skills, proxy will just return the cached copy instead of fetching it again from YouTube. And this way it will save bandwidth and reduce any unnecessary traffic to the internet. And this kind of proxy is also called a forward proxy. Now back to our restaurant analogy. Your assistant made the reservation and you arrive. Now what you do is instead of wandering around looking for a table yourself, you check in at the reception desk, right? The receptionist tells you, follow me and shows you to the right table. So here the receptionist is also a proxy, but this time on a receiving end of the request. It sits in front of the restaurant's internal dining areas, which in our case are the servers, and manages the incoming requests or the guests and distributes them to the right tables by checking the capacity and having overview of the entire flow. And this proxy sitting on the server side, handling those incoming requests from clients is called a reverse proxy. And the function of distributing the guests evenly across dining areas and tables is load balancing, which is one of the key functionalities of a reverse proxy. But it's not the only functionality. Reverse proxies actually have most of the features that the forward proxies have, like acting as a shield to protect the servers. Because when you have hundreds of servers and they all have access to sensitive data or code, 
it's really dangerous to expose all 100 servers directly to the internet. Instead, you protect them in an internal network and you just put one or few proxy servers as an entry point and you configure all the security measures on that handful of proxies. So what the reverse proxies will do is they will scan the request, they will ensure SSL encryption is enabled, so the traffic is encrypted, and will check basically for any security threats or any attempts of hacking into your systems. It also provides caching to speed up responses to the clients and has a logging functionality for doing troubleshooting, for example. So a lot of the features forward proxy has, reverse proxy has as well. And one of the most popular reverse proxies is Nginx, which you may already know as an engineer. If not, I actually have a separate video on Nginx that you can watch here. So as you see, load balancing is just one of the many functionalities of a reverse proxy. So it's a feature that a proxy can perform. Now, many of you may ask here, but what about the cloud load balancers? Why do we need reverse proxy if we have cloud load balancers? Are they a replacement for reverse proxies? Like AWS and other cloud platforms, they all have load balancers. So why do I need an Nginx reverse proxy to load balance the incoming traffic if I can just use AWS load balancer? Well, in practice, you actually want to use both. And here is why. For example, you would have your cloud load balancer outside of your servers as an entry point into your private network, while reverse proxy will be routing traffic within your server network. So now you are encapsulating the reverse proxy and those backend servers all into a private network. And the load balancer basically just sits there and does a basic load balancing to the reverse proxy. And this type of layered approach actually makes your infrastructure much more secure and also much more scalable. You may be asking, why do I need to load balance twice on multiple levels? So why do I need proxy inside if I have the load balancing outside? Reverse proxy actually has more intelligent, fine-grained load balancing, which will allow you to do much more intelligent routing to the web servers. So while cloud load balancers distribute traffic based on simple algorithms, like whoever is the least busy, on reverse proxy, you can configure more advanced routing logic based on headers, cookies, or session data. For example, you can decide all the requests from the same user, they always go to the same web server. So it will basically check the associated session data or cookies, and it will forward the same client requests to the same server. Reverse proxy can also handle SSL and TLS termination, and it can inspect the encrypted traffic to make more informed load balancing decisions. And this is especially important in microservices architecture, where you may have plenty of microservices, and based on the request path, for example, or the URL, you may want to forward that request to a specific microservice. So it's a very logical load balancing that reverse proxy is doing here. And in our restaurant scenario, this would be equivalent to if our receptionist, for example, knew some loyal guests and showed them to their favorite table to have dinner, or they selected a table with the best view for guests who are celebrating a special occasion, or giving a different menu for vegetarian guests, and so on. So basically more customized request handling based on a little bit more information about the guests. And the setup that I described is actually exactly the one that we would use in a Kubernetes cluster with microservices, where an ingress controller, which is basically reverse proxy for Kubernetes, will handle internal routing and security, while the cloud load balancer will act as the first line of defense, managing the external traffic and kind of shielding them before they get to the cluster. And finally, another question you may be asking here, especially if you are a software engineer, is what about the servers or proxies that start automatically when I run my Node.js or Java application? What are those? Are those reverse proxies as well? How do they run or how do they start in the background? Well, these are lightweight proxies. For example, Node.js, it doesn't have a built-in reverse proxy, but you can easily create one using its HTTP module or a framework like Express.js. 
which is actually a framework that most people use with Node.js. So compared to Nginx, for example, which is used in production, Express.js serves different purpose. However, these two can actually be used in combination. So for comparison, Nginx is a high performance web server and reverse proxy. So it's a technology that can be used for web server as well as reverse proxy. And it's ideal for serving static content, has load balancing functionality, it handles security features like SSL termination and so on. While Express.js is a minimalist web framework for Node.js specifically, used to build dynamic web applications and APIs. And you can actually configure some custom logic and middleware for how the request should be handled for different endpoints. Plus, Nginx also has an advantage that it can handle a large number of concurrent connections very efficiently, while Express.js is less performant in that area. So in proper production setup, Nginx is often deployed in front of an Express.js application as a reverse proxy. So in this setup, Nginx will handle static files, load balance requests, and manage the security, while Express.js will process the more dynamic content. So that's basically the breakdown of proxy versus reverse proxy, as well as load balancer, which is pretty simple if you understand them at this basic level. So I hope I was able to help you understand what these concepts are clearly, and more importantly, how they compare to each other, which I think is probably the most challenging part of understanding proxies and load balancing and so on. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you really want to advance your IT career, then we can absolutely help you with our structured learning programs, which are focused on practical demos that mirror real life projects. And one of the most important ones that we have is our certified DevOps practitioner program. We have trained thousands of engineers who have successfully transitioned from other engineering roles like network engineer, test engineer, software engineer, to getting their first DevOps engineering jobs, transitioning successfully into DevOps, and even sometimes moving countries to work at their dream company. However, there is a prerequisite knowledge required to do this program. This means if you have a solid IT background in any other engineering field, and you know already that DevOps engineering is currently one of the most promising and one of the most future-proof IT jobs that you can have. Our DevOps Bootcamp will literally guide you step-by-step step through every single cloud and DevOps technology that you need to learn and how to combine them and use them together to build end-to-end -end DevOps processes. If you're interested, you can actually download a free PDF that lists all the real life demo projects that you're going to be building and learning with throughout the DevOps Bootcamp. And you will find the link to this PDF in the description, along with all the other relevant information for this video. And as always, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.